Hello everyone, welcome. Today we're going to go for a chess game played in the year 2006 between Indian Grandmaster Sasakiran, who is playing Magnus Carlsen. But we're going to look at it from Magnus's perspective. In this game he was actually losing this position. And I want you to imagine that you're Magnus Carlsen and see how you would respond in this position and how you would defend it. So Magnus, we all know, is an absolute genius of defence and endgame technique. Try and work out what he played in this position to try and hold this game. In this position, Magnus has it pretty bad. He's an exchange down, um, but it's opposite coloured bishops, and white's pawn structure is quite segmented. And also, white has to hold on to this d4 pawn, and it's currently blockaded by the queen. So not easy for white to win. It's also good to note that both kings are relatively exposed. Let's say this pawn disappeared, White's bishop would be supremely good on, on this uh, b2 square, hanging up the king. Uh, likewise, if this bishop manages to get over to c6, for instance, it'd be very powerful against the white king. So let's get down to it. How would you improve your position if you, if you came up with this? Well, for starters, all of black's pawns are on white squares. So this bishop isn't actually at its maximum potential. So this is what Magnus decides to do. He played the move f4. And after this move is played, his plan is kind of revealed. He basically wants to play this move, h6. He wants to play g5 and get his bishop on the white square diagonal to control the majority of the squares. So f4 is what he played. And Satakiri now played queen to g2. Magnus continued with his plan. He played h6, prepares the move g5, where he'll have a nice pawn chain. But now white throws a spanner in the works and plays the move f3. Hits the rook on e4, forcing black to now make a decision. And Magnus now makes a very interesting decision. I wonder how many of you would play this move. He played the move rook to e3. Forcing white now to make a decision. Does white want to take the rook on e3? Or do they perhaps want to play a different move? Well, um, his hand is kind of forced really. If white plays a nothing move, let's say h4 in this position, black actually could potentially play rook takes d3. Rook takes d3 and they have knight to e5 and they're going to win a pawn. The rook's attacked, it has to move. It can either move on the third rank or the D rank or the D file. So they'll lose a pawn. Sorry for this ridiculous amount of arrows there, but they'll either lose the F3 pawn or the D4 pawn at some point. So after rook to E3, white's hand is forced. They have to take the rook off as bishop takes E3, and now knight takes E3, forking the queen and the rook. So it wasn't an exchange sacrifice for black, it was actually just a peace swap. And now white has to make yet another decision. Did they want to take the knight off straight away? Or will they allow black to take the rook on d1? Well, if rook takes e3, then pawn will obviously recapture. And white will play with the best move is rook to d3, where you hit the pawn on e3. Magnus would have probably played queen to d6. Still eyeing up the d4 pawn, but also stopping the white queen from moving away from the second rank, because there's moves like queen to g3. Also coming where you could potentially get a perpetual check. For instance if uh, rook takes e3 we'll just play queen takes d4. Probably an easy draw after this. Uh, if queen to h2 then black actually has a really nice tactic here with e2. If queen takes e2 obviously you've got bishop to c4 here and we'll pick up the exchange. And this should be a draw also. So after e2, we're threatening to get a queen, so why are we forced to play rook to e3? Whereupon black can play queen takes d4. After queen takes e2, g5. Again, black actually has really good chances to draw this game. As you saw in my, my previous videos, the active bishop is actually quite good in, in these sort of defences. The two pawns are on dark squares, and black has very good chances to draw this anyway. So going back to this position with knight, knight takes e3, uh, instead of rook takes e3, Saskirin decided to play queen to f2 instead. 
So black takes a rook, as rook takes d1, and Magnus finishes his plan of playing g5. He's now got three connected pawns, all in a black squared pawn chain, and now his bishop has become a really good piece. But how does Magnus defend? Well, it's queen to e2 in the game. Magnus played bishop to e6. We see this active bishop hitting h3. The king defends. And now Magnus attacks again. Queen to f5, attacking this weak h3 square. Uh, basically forces white to trade queen. So queen to e5 is played. This queen takes e5, pawn takes e5. And Magnus played king to g6. Uh, and after this series of moves, I think most of you may be thinking now, this looks quite easy to draw if you've seen the previous video, because these two pawns are fairly weak. Uh, this e5 pawn is also going to be very hard to keep hold of. If the king comes into f5, the rook will always have to defend it. For instance, let's say white plays rook to a1, king to f5, rook to a5 to keep a hold of the pawn. But now bishop to d7, king to g2, bishop to c6. There's no way white can protect all these pawns. They're going to have to give up one sooner or later. So let's go back to the game. Rook to d8 was played by Sasakir, and he realises his e5 pawn is probably lost. Um, so goes on the offensive on the other side of the board, on the weakest part of the pawn chain. Magnus played king to f5. There was rook to h8. And now there's a trade of pawns. King takes e5. Rook takes h6. Bishop to f5. And now king to g2. And as I say previously, uh, these two pawns are very weak, both on white squares as well. So Magnus has done quite well to make his bishop an absolute monster in this endgame. And as I said in a previous video, it's good to have an active bishop. And this is how you draw these positions. So bishop to e6 from Magnus, the king went to f2. And now bishop to f5, where it looks like a clean draw. If white decides to try and get their king around uh, our king here, the king to e2, then we can play bishop to e6, and after king to d2, we can just hold on with bishop to f5. Once the king drops round, just bishop to e6 again, king to b4, and we can play bishop to d5. There's no way for this king to get in, and as I say, these pawns are very weak, so once the king is diverted away, the black bishop will just uh, start capturing pawns. Back to the game then, after bishop to f5, um, Sasakirin tried to change things up, played h4, there was a trade, the bishop went to e6, there was a check, and now there's king to f6. And all of a sudden this position looks very similar to a, another video, doesn't it? It's the active bishop against the rook and king endgame, where we managed to draw it. And let's see how this happened then. So. White went rook to c5 in the game. Magnus went bishop to b3. There was king to e2. King to e6. And now white tries to bring their king in to these two squares. But now comes bishop to d5, hitting the f3 square. The king has to go backwards to defend it. Uh, there's no a in for the king, so king to d6 hits a rook. The rook goes to the side of the board. Magnus just centralizes once again. King to f2, king to d6. White tries to go the other way, king to g2, but again, bishop to e6 now shuts the door on this king. Rook to h5, bishop to d7, and then king to f2. White tries again, but after another series of moves with bishop c4, king e1, bishop d5, attacking the pawn once again. White's forced to protect it, and we see that there's actually no way for this king to get in and save this pawn at the same time. So this is a theoretical draw. Again, in this game, I believe it took another 30 or 40 moves for both sides to agree a draw. Obviously, White was trying a lot of different methods, but uh, safe to say, Magnus is an endgame master and he managed to draw this game. So now you too know how to defend these sort of positions as well. Hopefully this series of videos has helped you improve your chess somewhat. I'm sure it's increased your ELO by at least a few points if not more. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick video. If you did, please do drop a like, comment, or subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And hopefully I'll go through more of these type of uh, end game positions very soon. See you next time.